All right, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Jason, product lead at Drips. Very nice to meet you all. Um, so I would like to start by just very quickly introducing Drips for those of you who don't yet know it. And in order to do that, I would like to go back to the very beginning real quick. So when we started designing this current iteration of Drips, uh, we got quite inspired by this old XKCD comic right here, uh, which became a little bit of a meme in four circles. So basically what it tries to say is just like, you know, practically all the software that we use in our daily lives today, uh, like it just relies on that massive pile of like interconnected dependencies. And unfortunately, the lower you go in this pile, the more obscure and often also the less funded uh, these dependencies become, which is obviously a problem, right? So not only is that kind of unfair, <laughs> uh, it's also just, like, it has very serious consequences for things like supply chain security, uh, but also just the general velocity of innovation in FOSS. Uh, and so what we were thinking is, can we, there we go, can we do anything to help solve this? Uh, what if we could create a fundable graph of real world software dependencies? So some kind of on-chain structure that represents this real world like interconnectedness of software, uh, where you can just pick any node in this graph and distribute funding through it. That would automatically kind of trickle down to the no, kind of nodes in this graph nested below. Uh, and so that's exactly the goal that we had in mind when we built this current iteration. Uh, so in order to introduce you to this, let me just quickly uh, show you kind of what we came up with by introducing the three different main primitives that we currently have in DRIPS, uh, which you can think of as kind of three different types of nodes that we have in the system. So the first type of node is just called a project, and it just represents a open source software package, application, anything you can find on GitHub. In this case, we have Ethos, a very popular Web3 library. Uh, and the first important thing to note here is that any open source repository on GitHub gets a fundable project on Drips by default inherently. So you can literally just like take any GitHub URL, put it into Drips and fund it. And it doesn't matter whether the people that are behind the project even know about Drips or not, right? And this is very important because uh, it allows us to basically like kickstart the organic growth of this graph, because if we didn't have this capability, then like every time anyone would want to fund any project, they would have to first like go and like chase the people that are behind the project to like sign up to something, and obviously that just doesn't work. And so the second important thing to mention about projects is that they have this like list of splits right here. So you can see that this project basically splits to. Uh, different maintainers and dependencies. And this can also evolve over time. So that's projects, and let's move on to drip lists. So a drip list is just a collection of projects like that, uh, which can be created by anyone for whatever purpose. And it's really, really just this list of projects, and it's intended for just like having organizations just fund multiple nodes in the graph all at once. Now, of course, sometimes which dependencies and people an organization wants to fund is not that immediately apparent. And so, in fact, this is why we do things like RetroPGF, right? Just to settle on who receives what amount of the distribution. And for this exact purpose, we recently shipped a new feature we call collaborative drip lists. I'm not gonna go into detail, but basically, anyone can just start a vote on recipients for a drip list like this. And once the vote starts, basically like all the collaborators come together uh, submit votes for like what they think the final percentages should be. And then after the vote, it gets published on chain. So that's drip lists. The third primitive is pretty obvious, so I'm just gonna go over it real quick. Uh, just any address can become a node in the graph, any Ethereum address. So this could represent an individual funder, could be an organization, a multisig, anyone that wants to fund anything on drips or wants to receive funds. So those are the three main primitives in this kind of like, you know, the types of nodes in the DRIPS dependency graph. And so with these primitives available, over time, basically like on chain, this like representation of the real world dependency graph forms, like right on chain, where the DRIP lists kind of act as the entry nodes where funds come in. Uh, the projects act as funding targets, but they also split funds, excuse me, they split funds with other nodes as well, like their dependencies. And then projects also, of course, split to maintainers represented by addresses that kind of act like exit nodes, like the ultimate kind of funding targets at the end of the day. So that's just a quick introduction to Drips. Let's move on to Drips on Filecoin because we have some very exciting news here. So 
Since the last time we spoke at this event in Denver earlier this year, uh, we are fully deployed on Filecoin, which is super exciting. In fact, it's the first like non-Ethereum chain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So this just means that everything I just talked about is now possible right on Filecoin. And the plan here, as many of you know, is to just, you know, have a drip list of the Filecoin RetroPGF2 recipients, like on drips, and then do the distribution through drips. And uh, we also have this new, like, Filecoin-specific Explore page, which is kind of like a homepage for drips on Filecoin. And it's really basic right now, but we are looking forward to evolving this over time. So short term, we're definitely going to put that drip list right here, obviously. Um, but we're also thinking maybe long term, this could evolve into some kind of PGF hub, potentially for Filecoin with like, you know, some statistics, maybe like a history of past rounds, anything else that we might think of in the future. And now to quickly talk about some like Filecoin specific UX improvements we've made or are working on actually. Uh, so first up, uh, we're aiming to make the entire like project claim flow and the earnings collection flow entirely gasless, which means that basically people will be able to claim their project and collect their earnings without needing, needing any Filecoin in their wallets in the beginning. Um, this, so this is not live yet, but it's probably going to be live <laughs> before the distribution starts in December and obviously going to have a great impact on UX. So the second thing is seems a bit mundane at first. It's a progress bar. <laughs> But actually, like FEVM, still the block time is pretty long, so it can take quite a while to like verify the project. Um, and so we just shipped this thing, uh, and uh, you know it just makes it seem as if things are happening. Like it just makes you feel good about it. Uh, and so actually, also sh probably should improve UX of the claim process a lot. So quick pat on our own backs at the end here. Uh, we already did get a really nice shout out from one of the RPGF recipients about our UX, which you know the whole team was very excited about. Uh, and yeah, we're going to continue working on making it even better. So a last point I would like to make real quick. So most, if not all, I'm not sure actually, of the recipients on that drip list from Filecoin are going to be projects on drips. And so this means that these recipients will have the ability to split some of their earnings with their own dependencies if they so choose. Uh, and assuming that a good percentage does, it actually means that the round could potentially have a much larger impact than just like, you know, going beyond the first degree of like direct recipients. Uh, and we may, might even end up onboarding some completely non web three native developers to Filecoin, which I think is pretty exciting and something that we've already seen on Ethereum. All right. So yeah, that's it. Uh, all in all, we're just very excited to be part of Filecoin RPGF and uh, looking forward to learning from this current round. Thank you. Thanks.